Mahanagar Gas is the company in focus. Remember, for Q1, there was visible volume growth, and the expectations is that this volume growth will aid healthy EBITDA margin performance going ahead as well uh, and help in the CAGR. They're planning to add about 50 to 25 CNG stations in MGL as well as the subsidiary uh, uh, too. And um, the, the growth in small trucks, LCV, CNG vehicles might all aid businesses like MGL. So let's put all of this into perspective and ask this uh, to the managing director of the company, Mr. Ashur Shingali joins us right now on the show. Mr. Shingal, good having you. Thanks for taking the time out. Uh, were you uh, happy with the performance or would you have hoped for more? Because the volumes did look as if they've beaten the street estimates. Did they meet your estimates or did they beat your estimates? So I think the estimates, what we have expected them to grow, they have grown in that line, except that industrial and commercial has slightly come down because some of the customers were down. But we are very happy about the CNG segment. We have launched several schemes last year from October onwards, which has started having an impact, as well as the prices have been favorable. The petrol is around 50% cheap and uh, diesel is around 20% cheap. I mean, CNG is 50% uh, cheaper than petrol and 20% uh, cheaper than diesel. So it's the right sweet spot where we think we can attract more uh, customers on CNG side. Okay. Mr. Singhal, uh, what about this volume growth trajectory? Because almost every note that I've read from people who attended your call or heard you on the presser, et cetera, have spoken about how volume growth presumably will continue to remain strong for a better part of FY25. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, that should be a fair assessment because last year we have grown by around 5.5%. This quarter we have grown by more than 2%. And if we expect that this uh, same growth will continue, we will be clocking around 8% this financial year. So that's a good number because traditionally we have been growing much less. Uh, I mean, if you talk about three or four years back, we were growing at the range of around 3% or so. So from there on, we have moved down to around 8%, and we will like to make that trajectory uh, going forward in the next few years, primarily because of the right pricing uh, mechanism with industry and commercial al along with CNG, and adding more infrastructure. We are adding more steel lines, P network, as well as CNG stations, 15 Mahanagar gas and maybe 13 Unison. Earlier, we were adding around uh, maybe, say, 25 stations. Now, this year, 36 station we have had last financial year, and this year we are going to add 50 plus 30. So around 80 stations we are adding. So good infrastructure will definitely aid to the uh, aid to the volume growth which we expect or target to hit this financial year. And 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 and, and this whole uh, piece, right? I mean, uh, the proliferation of CNG vehicles, even as EVs come to the fore, I think MSRTC is going to see bus conversions to CNG as well. Uh, this also aids uh, this volume growth story, I reckon. Is there a number you're putting Absolutely. there, sir, on the estimate on the volume growth? Around 7 to 8% is our guiding guidance for this financial year. And you are very right. In case, uh, in case of MSRTC, we are very optimistic because they have already added around 90 buses this quarter. And uh, we expect that some more buses will become on board on CNG. In fact, they have also been adding some LNG buses to their fleet. So overall, the trend is that moving away from diesel buses to CNG and LNG buses, which is a very welcome step. And both these segments, we are having a good presence. And we expect that uh, similar uh, thing will be available also in BEST, because BEST, the buses have not been increasing. And there are problems of uh, large queues we can see in Mumbai, about uh, less number of buses running on uh, of BEST. So we expect that BEST will also roll out more CNG buses, although they have added some more in this quarter. Got it. Uh, this long-term growth of LNG retailing, sir, looks very promising, always though uh, accompanied by the volatility in LNG pricing and the uncertainty that brings. Can you, can you just talk about that? How do you see it from your perspective, these twin factors, but just this long-term potential, especially for India with all the kind of uh, imports and the stations that we're talking about? I think uh, India cannot go away with LNG because right now around 55% LNG are imported in India and uh, around 45% is domestically produced. 
coming to LNG retail, if we have to find a solution or an alternate to diesel, uh, high heavy trucks or uh, commercial vehicles, which are slightly on maybe heavy tonnage commercial vehicles, then if you have to do away with diesel, the only option available is LNG and in the mid segment CNG. Going forward, maybe hydrogen can play a part, but that is still some time to go because uh, infrastructure is required to be created. And there are several other issues, availability of hydrogen availability. In case of electric vehicles also, the heavy weight of batteries, the charging problems and the cost and very high cost of electric uh, trucks doesn't make it a very suitable option for heavy trucks. So we expect that CNG in the mid-commercial mid vehicles and heavy commercial vehicles, LNG can play an important part. The potential is huge. Like we are also very aggressive about putting up more LNG retail outlets. And in case uh, there are around 40 lakh heavy trucks running on Indian roads. So even if 10% uh, gets converted, the potential of import of LNG will be very high. So we, we want to cash into this opportunity and we expect, we are in touch with several customers. I mean, it's a jigsaw puzzle about retail infrastructure, OEs and the transporters and the customers coming on board to make it a success. But all the pieces are there in, in place and we expect that LNG retail will also pick up uh, substantially in coming few years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just one last very quick question, sir. Uh, what about, uh, I, I, you partly addressed this question in your answer. Some of the options are far out, some have supply issues, but there are some here and now, uh, uh, especially this whole proliferation of electric vehicles. So can cheaper fuels impact the growth story in the next three, four years? Or if they do, they'll impact it only at the end of the decade, if at all? See, we feel that there is a place for all the fuels to coexist. It cannot happen that electric vehicles have come and they will eat away all the market of CNG, petrol, diesel. So if we have to say the picking order also, first of all, the most polluting fuel will be moving out. I mean, even if we consider the commercial viability without any subsidies, others, other things also. The CNG is cheaper and less polluting as compared to diesel and petrol. That's why CNG is getting promoted in several parts of the country and government is very bullish about uh, they have allocated all the areas in the country and more cheap gas is being allocated to CGDs entities. So therefore, the space for the growth and the existing fleet itself will carry on the movement for many, uh, many, many years to, I mean, replicate all these heavy, highly cap capital intensive infrastructure is not easy and it is not possible to replicate in a few years. So otherwise also there are several advantages of uh, CNG and LNG especially to uh, first move on from diesel and petrol to these fuels. And when the market matures and the infrastructure is ready and the affordability is there, connectivity and accessibility, then maybe hydrogen and electric vehicles can take over. But still, I mean, these fuels have been coexisting for quite a long time. Let us say petrol and diesel and CNG have coexisted since last three or four decades. So similar trend is expected in our view that other fuels will definitely will have a coexistence in the market. Got it. Mr. Shingal, great talking to you. Thank you for all those insights. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. That's the view from MGL. And on the note that equity markets are holding out above the 25,000 mark with IT not playing ball, but Nifty Bank doing okay. We wrap it up on this leg of talking point. It's a momentous day, uh, and I'm glad we were live to bring it to you. Uh, that's all the time on talking point, of course. Uh, thanks so much for watching.